the mirror to evidence under section 23 of rule 119 um, this can be used as a dismissal of the action or com or information or complaint filed in court in which the court may dismiss the action on the ground of insufficiency of evidence so the court may dismiss the action on the ground of insufficiency on its own initiative motu proprio after giving the prosecution the opportunity to be heard or upon the mirror filing of the mirror to evidence filed by the accused with or without leave of court in filing for the mirror to evidence as a counsel, file it after the prosecution rested its case and before the counsel of the accused presents his evidence. File this demurrer with either with leave of court or without leave of court. If filed with leave of court and is denied by the court, the accused will still be allowed to present evidence. If filed without leave of court and is denied by the court, the accused will not be allowed to present evidence and the case will be submitted for decision. So be careful. So again, during trial, when the prosecutor is done presenting all his evidence and rested its case, that's the time before the counsel presents his evidence, file already a motion to the mirror to evidence. He, he filed with leave of court, the counsel may file motion to demur to evidence before he presents his evidence. But um, the demurrer with leave of court was denied. It shall not be reviewable by appeal or certiorari under Rule 65, but go with trial and present evidence. So still, the accused is allowed to present evidence if um, the mirror with leave of court is denied. What if the mirror without leave of court was denied? So the accused cannot anymore, will not anymore be allowed to present evidence and the case is already submitted for decision. Um, what if the, the, the mirror to evidence was granted? So therefore, um, the court will dismiss the case on the ground of insufficiency of evidence and it is um, equal to acquittal or tantamount to acquittal. What if the aggrieved party uh, wants to appeal the decision of granting them the motion to demur to evidence? So file the, the prosecution's remedy is to file for certiorari under Rule 65. What if um, the court on its own initiative, motu proprio, um, dismiss the case on the ground of insufficiency of evidence. Uh, after the prosecution rests its case, the court may dismiss the, uh, the action on the ground of insufficiency of evidence on its own. If you want to appeal on the decision of the court dismissing the case on the ground of sufficiency of evidence, so file it with um, certiorari under Rule 65. After the parties, prosecution and defense rested its case and submit the case for resolution by the court, it is already now the promulgation of judgment under Rule 120. Section 1 of Rule 120, judgment is the adjudication by the court that the accused is guilty or not guilty of the offense charge and the imposition on him of the proper penalty and civil liability, if any. So, in judgment, it is now the court will tell uh, whether guilty or not guilty and the proper imposition of penalty and civil liability. Take note that judgment must be written in the official language personally and directly prepared by the judge and signed by him. The judge personally signed it and shall contain clearly and distinctly a statement of the facts and the law upon which it is based. So again, the judgment must be written personally by the judge, prepared by the judge, and signed by himself. And the judgment contains the facts and the law which 
the judgment is based. An interesting case in which in people in Rivera versus people, the judge made an order uh, in open court dismissing the case for failure to adduce evidence on the part of the prosecution. So later issued an order setting aside his order. The 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 previous order was set aside by by the judge, the same judge, in open court and allowed prosecution to present evidence. Now, the accused objected on the ground of double jeopardy. The issue now here is whether, the, whether there is double jeopardy. The Supreme Court held that, ruled that there is no double jeopardy because the judge issued a verbal order of dismissal. Thus, void. Take note that the judgment must be written, personally written, and signed by the judge. So, in this case, it is only an oral judgment of dismissal, not a written um, judgment of dismissal. There can be no valid judgment issued here. Then, therefore, no double jeopardy shall be applied to the accused. Question. Judge Y um, received the case of X while serving in Manila RTC. Before he before Judge Y be issuing its decision on the case of X, he was transferred, he was laterally transferred to QC RTC. So will still Judge Y um, render the decision uh, of X in Manila RTC? The answer is yes. A case already submitted for decision shall be decided by the judge to whom they were submitted, even if the judge was laterally transferred to a different RTC. So again, if the decision, if the case was already submitted for decision to a particular judge, then such judge. In this case, the case was submitted to Judge Y. So therefore, it should be the job or duty of Judge Y to make a decision on the case of X, even though he was laterally transferred already to the other um, regional trial court. In giving judgment, the accused can be acquitted or convicted of the offense charge. If acquittal or acquitted under Section 2 of Rule 120, the civil liability may still be awarded. Judgment shall state whether the evidence of the prosecution absolutely failed to prove the guilt of the accused or merely fails to prove his guilt beyond reasonable doubt. In either case, the judgment shall determine if the act or omission from which the civil liability might arise did not exist. So, when it comes in acquittal, it means to say the prosecution failed to prove the guilt of the accused. At the same time, the judgment shall also include whether or not um, there is civil liability arising from the act or omission filed against the accused. There are two kinds of acquittal. The first is the acquittal on the ground that the accused is not the author of the act or omission complained of. For short, um, the accused here uh, is not the one who made the act or omission complained of. So therefore, there can be no civil liability attached. While in acquittal based on reasonable doubt on the, on the guilt of the accused, the civil liability may attach. There is still doubt and there is still the question whether or not the accused um, truly committed the act or omission filed or complained against him. Because the prosecution failed to prove that the accused committed the crime. In this case, when the civil liability attaches, the offended party may appeal the civil liability. This is in Sanchez versus Far East Bank. Three categories of acquittal where civil liability arises. This is in Salazar versus People. 
First is the acquittal based on reasonable doubt. Second, court declared that the liability of accused is only civil. Third is where civil liability of the accused does not arise from the crime where the accused was acquitted. Again, these are the categories wherein the accused is already acquitted but there is still civil liability arises. First is acquittal based on reasonable doubt. Second, the court declared that only civil liability shall be imposed. In conviction, the judgment shall state the legal qualification of the offense constitu constituted by the acts committed by the accused and the aggravating or mitigating circumstances which attended its commission. Second, it shall also state the participation of the accused in the offense whether as principal, accomplice, or accessory after the fact. Next, the penalty imposed upon the accused and the civil liability or damages caused by his wrongful act or omission to be recovered from the accused by the offended party. If there is any unless the enforcement of the civil liability by a separate civil action has been reserved or waived. So, if the judgment is conviction and you are the lawyer who is aggrieved by the judgment of conviction, study the statement, study the paper, uh, and determine if there is sufficient and clear statement by the court of the legal qualification or the offense constituted by the acts committed by the accused whether the acts um, constituted the the offense charge against him whether there is consideration of aggravating and mitigating circumstances attending the commission of the crime determine if they are considered or appreciated by the court and also um, determine if there is the statement of participation of the accused in the offense charge whether he is penalized as principal as the accomplice or accessory to the crime and determine what kind or what penalty was imposed to the accused whether prison correctional prison mayor reclusion temporal rec uh, reclusion um, perpetua that and also determine if what civil liability or damages may be awarded to the offended party that will be paid by the accused. Um, determine if such civil liability is reserved or waived. Variance between allegation and proof. Under Section 4 of Rule 120, the accused shall be convicted of the offense proved which is included in the offense charge or of the offense charge which is included in the offense proof. Example, if the allegation is murder, then it was proved in the court homicide, the conviction shall be homicide. Next, if the allegation is homicide, but it was proved murder, then the conviction shall be homicide. Take note that the conviction is always on the lower offense. When do we say that an offense is included in another offense? So, kumbaga, when, when can you say that a homicide is included in murder? That a theft is included in ravery under section 5 rule 120 an offense charge necessarily includes the offense proved when some of the essential elements or ingredients of the former as alleged in the complaint or information constitute the latter so it means to say if murder is alleged in the complaint or information and some of its elements shall constitute homicide.
and when homicide is alleged in the information it shall be necessarily included in the offense proof that is murder so if the court prove that there is murder the homicide as alleged in the information must be included in murder because the essential elements of homicide shall constitute murder so now promulgation of judgment under section 6 of rule 120 the judgment is promulgated how by reading it in the presence of the accused and any judge of the court in which it was rendered that is the general rule reading it in the presence of the accused together with his counsel and any judge of the court in which it was rendered however if the conviction is for a light offense the judgment may be pronounced reading it in the presence of his counsel or representative only that is only for the case when judgment is for light offense in the presence only of the counsel's accused or representative when the judge is absent or outside of the province or city the judgment may be promulgated by the clerk of court how is judgment promulgated when the accused is up, is detained if the accused is confined or detained in another province or city the judgment may be promulgated by the executive judge of the regional trial court having jurisdiction over the place of confinement or detention upon the request of the court which rendered the judgment the court promulgating the judgment shall have the authority to accept the notice of appeal and to approve the bail ban pending appeal provided that if the decision of the trial court convicting the accused change the nature of the offense from non-bailable to bailable the application for bail can only be filed and resolved by the appellate court so it is now the job of the executive judge of the regional trial court upon request by the court issuing the judgment to promulgate the judgment to the detainee while promulgating the judgment the court um, shall accept already notice of appeal and to approve bail ban pending appeal as a limitation if the decision of the trial court convicting the accused change the nature of the offense from non-bailable to bailable so therefore the application for bail shall be resolved and be filed already to the appellate court so again if there is if the trial court convicts the accused and change the nature from non-bailable to bailable so therefore the application for bail shall be filed already to the appellate court then the appellate court shall resolve it how promulgated is made when accused failed to appear despite notices in case the accused fails to appear at the scheduled date of promulgation of judgment despite notices the promulgation the promulgation shall be made by recording the judgment in the criminal docket and serving him a copy thereof at his last known address or through his counsel so if the accused tried in absentia um because he jumped bail or escaped from prison then the notice or the promulgation of judgment shall only be served by serving him a copy of the resolution by copy of the judgment to his last known address or through his counsel take note if the judgment is convicting the accused and the accused failed to appear and his failure to appear was without justifiable cause the effect would be he shall lose the remedies available in these rules against the judgment and the court shall order his arrest
So again, if there is absence uh, in prom the promulgation of judgment and the judgment is for his conviction, there will be a loss of remedies and it will not anymore be available uh, for the accused against the judgment and the court shall order shall order his arrest. But what is the remedy of you as a lawyer of the accused as the defense counsel? Within 15 days from promulgation of judgment, however, the accused may surrender and file a motion for leave of court to avail these remedies. So again, within 15 days, within 15 days from the date of promulgation of judgment so from the date of promulgation promulgation of judgment count 15 days and within that 15 days the accused must surrender and file a motion for leave of court to avail remedies the accused shall state the defense counsel shall state the reasons for the absence of his accused at the scheduled promulgation and if the accused proves that his defense or his absence was for justifiable cause. He shall be allowed to avail of said remedies in these rules within 15 days from notice. Again, as a counsel for the accused, file a motion for leave of court to avail these remedies by stating the reason of his absence in the scheduled promulgation and prove that the absent was with justifiable cause. If the court will grant the motion, the accused shall only be allowed to avail the remedies within 15 days only from the notice of granting the motion.